Martin Luther King In 1929, Martin Luther King was born in Atlanta, Georgia. During that time, discrimination was severe. As an African-American boy, King suffered much discrimination. King's dad was a pastor, so he taught the Bible to his sons. One day, King came across an old friend. They used to play together. Hey, how are you? However, his friend's mom stopped him. Blacks are not allowed to play with whites. King was very hurt because of her words. There were many restaurants, cinemas, and other public places where black people couldn't go. They also had to attend separate schools. King entered Booker Washington High School. On his way back from a speech contest in Virginia, he took a bus with his friends, and they sat in empty seats near the front of the bus. However, the white bus driver shouted at them to sit at the very back. We paid the same bus fare, so why do we have to move? King, let's just do what he says. It's not going to change anything. He was about to explode with anger, but his teacher made him move to a back seat. He thought that the way white people treated black people was very unfair. Before finishing his school, King traveled around the northern regions of the U.S. He saw that blacks up north experienced less discrimination than blacks in the south. Then, King enrolled at Morehouse College, a school for black people. He loved the atmosphere of the college and professors. When he entered his junior year, he decided to become a pastor. Since his dad was a pastor, King had many opportunities to preach. Although he was very nervous in the beginning, he became very good at preaching as the time passed. During this time, he tried very hard to learn the pains and hopes of his people. One day, he went to a restaurant in New Jersey. We don't sell food for blacks! However, King and his friends sat down anyway. Then the restaurant owner took out his gun and threatened them if they didn't leave. After this incident, King decided to make a world where blacks received equal treatment. When King was a student at Boston University, he met Coretta. She was a student from a music college. King fell in love with her at first sight. When he proposed to her on the next day, Coretta decided to marry him after several days of consideration. As a result, she gave her dream of becoming a singer to become a preacher's wife. Coretta gave birth to their first child. King and Coretta spent the happiest moment of their lives together. After graduating college, King became a pastor at a church in Montgomery, Alabama. Montgomery had the most severe discrimination laws in the South. For example, blacks were not allowed to sit on the first four rows of the bus. Also, they had to give up their seats to the whites. In 1955, a black woman named Rosa Parks got on the bus. She sat on the seat where blacks were not allowed to sit. At the next station, a white passenger got on. At this point, the bus was very packed. Therefore, the bus driver told Rosa Parks to give up her seat to the white passenger. However, she refused 
and was soon arrested by the police. The black leaders in the community complained about this injustice to the police. The police told the bus drivers to be careful, but the drivers ignored their warnings. King gathered all the black leaders to discuss future plans regarding the issue. The bus company was run by white people, but most passengers were blacks. Therefore, the blacks decided to boycott riding the bus. Many blacks joined this movement to show their support. Black taxi drivers allowed only black passengers to pay a reduced fee, even though the police ordered them to pay legal fares. Black leaders asked some black people with cars to do the same as the taxi drivers. Some blacks even walked for long distances rather than take the bus. Meanwhile, a judge declared that the bus company was guilty. The Supreme Court also reached a final decision. They came to the conclusion that such discrimination against blacks was against the law. Hooray! Now we can ride the bus freely! It was a priceless victory that the blacks achieved together. In Montgomery, blacks were able to sit anywhere on the bus. After this incident, King began shaping the first steps of the Civil Rights Movement. King traveled around the country giving sermons. He claimed that violence was wrong. Since then, King always had many threats made against him. There were whites who wanted to kill him, but there were also blacks who wanted him dead. They didn't like the idea of nonviolence. One day, King visited blacks in the streets of New York. A big black woman approached King, angry and violent. She said King was trying to change her religion. In fact, she was insane. One day, King joined a sit-in with other blacks. The strike was held in one of the biggest stores in Atlanta because the store had discriminated against blacks. As a result, the police came and arrested all blacks, including King. King also participated in a car march with others. They were shouting slogans for eliminating discrimination. Then, in 1953, a march on Washington was held. As many as 200,000 people were gathered to demand the elimination of discrimination. After that day, King became the most respected black leader in the United States. Nineteen sixty four was the glorious year that King and other black leaders would never forget. The legislation against discrimination was created. The blacks were now able to proudly hold up their heads. King worked extremely hard for civil rights for blacks. Later that year, he received the Nobel Peace Prize. In April 1968, King went to Memphis and marched for black people who worked in dry cleaner shops. King had a discussion with his colleagues about a possible non-violent march. The march this weekend should be a peaceful one. I agree. Violence will bring worse violence, which will come back to hurt us. On that night, King was invited to have a dinner with a pastor. At the banister of his hotel, King waited for his colleagues to come out. Bang! 
A loud gunshot echoed, and then King collapsed. When people ran to him, it was already too late. King had died and gone up to heaven. When his death was announced, the entire country felt anger and sorrow. His wife Coretta and colleagues marched, demanding for nonviolence. King's body was moved to his hometown, Atlanta, and the funeral was held at the church where he first started his sermons. Many leaders, including President Johnson, attended his funeral. Over 100,000 citizens attended the funeral to pay homage to him. On the gravestone, his favorite quote from the Bible was written. A lot of people grieved over his death. King devoted his life for justice and truth. Although blacks lost a great leader, King's spirit still shines in the heart of all humanity.